welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Buzz Podcast. Thanks for joining us today as we continue to talk about all things in the uh, Catholic world and uh, in our own Catholic experience. My name is Father Daniele, and today uh, I'm joined by uh, my usual partner in crime, <laughs> Josh Sullivan. Yeah, hello. And we have a special guest with us uh, today. Uh, it's not Matt Van Milligan, <laughs> but it's uh, Mr. Brian Sullivan. Brian, welcome to you on our podcast today. Thank you, Father. Great to be here. And the reason, Brian, we have you here today is uh, because of your role with uh, the Caris uh, International. Right, and specifically the Canadian uh, Caris in a Council or <laughs> Service of Communion. Okay, yeah. Service of Communion. Yeah. Now, people might say, "What is Caris?" Right, and uh, right off the bat, you know, we're talking about a, a charismatic movement, right? I don't think we call it a movement anymore, right? We so don't. you're gonna you're gonna correct clarify that, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but people who might typically have a charismatic movement in their mind, right? Yeah. Uh, might think of uh, people who are expressing themselves in, in various gestures or languages uh, and, and being slain in the spirit or th things yeah. like that. So uh, what I what I w don't want to happen right off the bat is that people tune <laughs> you out, right? <laughs> uh, because what you uh, are going to sort of show us today is that Pope Francis has sort of made a lot of leeway for the uh, for Caris International and for a charismatic prayer in the church. Yes, he has. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Pope Francis has a heart for evangelization and in Nouveau Millenni no, in Evangelium Nuntianti, Paul VI said that the church exists to evangelize. And he said that without the Holy Spirit, there's, there's no fruit from evangelization. There's no, we're not effective if the Holy Spirit doesn't lead it. And the Holy Spirit gives us charisms so that we can be effective in our evangelizing. So when we're baptized, we're given, there are two calls placed on our life, the call to holiness and the call to mission. And mission means to support the church's work of evangelizing. And, and what happens in baptism then, to support our, we're not left alone to grow in holiness and to, to uh, support the church's call to mission. We're given sanctifying graces to grow in holiness that comes through our baptism as that call is placed on our life. And we're given charisms to be effective in supporting the mission of the church to evangelize. So Pope Francis realizes we're in what would be called an apostolic age. Christendom is dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't live in a Christian society anymore. Yeah. So um, we need to begin to evangelize the culture again because the Catholic Church and many of the churches, the Christian churches, are bleeding members because we're, we're not evangelizing. In Christendom, you evangelize on the fringes where they haven't heard of Jesus yet. But in, in a secular culture like we're living in now with Christendom dead, you've got to evangelize the culture that you're actually living in. And that means the church has to come alive in the grace to evangelize. What does that mean? It means you've got to have an awareness of the Holy Spirit. You've got to have an awareness of the charisms that make you effective in being able to evangelize. It sounds like it sounds like a lot like when I when you're speaking like that is of the old of the New Testament sorry the Acts of the Apostles where you, you like everyone heard of this Jesus guy they know who these apostles are they know that these, these miracles and everything else but they're still not <laughs> quite sure what's going on there but in using like we know from this from the stories there as they use their charisms or their gifts that they they they, they evangelized wholeheartedly throughout the entire New Testament right. Well, the call, sure, the call uh, when Jesus assumed was that go, go and, and, and baptize everyone in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. teach them all that I command you. But then he said, but wait, wait, wait until you receive the yeah, gift I'm about to give you, the gift that, I, that I'm going to my Father so that I can give you, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so it's when they receive that gift that the charisms erupted out of them, really, mm -hmm. and they 3,000 were converted the day they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit be, because of the signs and wonders that the charisms generate. Yeah. Um, if, if we're 
authentic with them. Um, and they support then the words that we're speaking in the kerygma, that Jesus you know, uh, was born, lived his passion, died, rose, ascended, and sent for the Holy Spirit for our sanctification and salvation, right? As we teach that kerygma, the signs and wonders, the charisms are meant to support the kerygma being received by unbelievers particularly. So we've recently uh, finished the Easter season. We've yeah. celebrated Pentecost. Yeah. We've celebrated the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. And, you know, in our prayer, it's always... Uh, when we look at God, we look at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I think it's natural that each of us lean one way, <laughs> if, that's, if that's fair. Some yeah. of us uh, rely yeah. heavily on the Father. Some yeah. of us rely heavily on Jesus. And But I, I feel like the Holy Spirit sometimes gets the back seat. Pope Benedict said, in, speaking to the World, World Youth Day, Youth Conference said, the Holy Spirit is the forgotten person of the Trinity. He said, you need to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need, we need to be attentive to his voice so that we know when we're getting a, a, an impulse or, a, or he's calling us to say something or to do something, we, we begin to recognize his voice so that then we can use the charisms to do what he asks us to do, being obedient to his voice. And that's, that's the key. And that's where the power flows, where it's his plan I can hear where he's leading me. I can hear what he's telling me to say or to do. And power flows in that. There's a gift that comes from it. The glory of God is revealed in it, in a charism. Mm -hmm. That's what's supposed to be happening. And the unbeliever is supposed to go, whoa, there's got to be something to the words preached here because of what I'm seeing. It's almost supernatural. Yeah, It is supernatural. The charisms are, are not natural talents. We have natural talents that we're born with. But the charisms come to us through baptism. Mm-hmm. And they are supernatural. What what is a charism? Like, if someone's saying, like, okay, uh, I'm ready to sort of understand a little more about what you know the Holy Spirit is, where He's guiding me. Yeah. What is a charism? Well, charism is a Greek word that means gratuitous gift. So it's simply a gift given from God mm-hmm. to support you in living out your mission, your baptismal call, your mission to support the church's work of evangelizing. That's what it's for. And there are there, there are many more than are listed in the Bible, many more than are listed in, in 1 Corinthians 12. There are lots and lots of charisms. But they all are to work together to allow the parish to become a center of evangelization. So not every not one person has all the gifts. You need a community in order to have all the gifts and to have the impact um, that the Lord would want us to have on evangelizing the culture. You need the church alive in their charisms because this is where the supernatural power is coming through, through them. You're simply a conduit, being obedient to the voice of the Spirit. And there is fruit of conversion that comes from that for the for those that don't have faith. If if we're trying to understand this uh, in a, in a you know a straightforward way, you know Saint Paul writes about that there are many gifts. Right, yeah. there are many gifts depending on the grace that's given to us. Right, um, and so each of us as people who are baptized yeah. are given certain gifts, or in this case, charism, a gratuitous gift. I mean, it just it's a beautiful it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Uh, but just like any gift that I give you or I give Josh or I give anyone, you know, you have to open it, <laughs> unwrap it, and, and, and use it for the function that it's given to you for. So if everyone baptized is given different gifts based on the grace given to them, I, I kind of see it like each parish, each community, because we're so full of different people with different gifts, yep. like you said, the, the purpose of it, it's like a puzzle. If everyone fits their piece in the right place, it, it makes a larger image, right? Yeah. It's like a family. Like you yeah. have a lot of children. Brian, you too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, everyone pulls their weight at home. Yeah. Exactly. And things work smoothly at home. Yeah. Uh, in, in, the par- in the parish, in the Christian community, outside of, even outside of a parish, in a Christian community, if everyone pulls their weight, realizes the mm-hmm. gratuitous gift that they have, and then lives it, 
there would be beautiful things happening because that's the point. God gave us those gifts for a reason. So let's list just some of those gifts so that people are understanding. Like, what are we talking? Because if because if they've heard of the charismatic movement, they might be thinking, "Oh, is that slain in the spirit? Is that what that is?" But that's not what we're talking about necessarily here. Some of the things that we're talking about are things like. Administration, I know, is a gift because we just went through a, a seminar stuff, and that was that was one that I like. I I found out myself. Oh, I check high on this area, you know, which is kind of cool. Um, discernment of spirits. Discernment of spirits is one. Um, hospitality uh, is hospitality a key one is in the parish. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about, uh, helps? Helps. Was helps one. in service are two different ones. Yeah. But are but are necessary for people that want to be in the background and not be up front. But want to support the church's mission to evangelize. You need those people that are setting up tables, and mm-hmm. you need the the people that are cooking the meals in the back, or, or yeah. setting up the coffee. In the they're as important as the person that may be preaching that night, or the yeah. teaching that night, or leading the music that night. The, the, and those are gifts too. Music. Those are the charism music, pastoring, or yeah. shepherding leadership. I think was another one I saw there. Leadership is an important one, and you also have word gifts like prophecy like a word of knowledge, like a word of wisdom. All of these are to work together in a parish to support the parish's um, mission to evangelize the culture. And if it does, and if we're following the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the culture is going to be evangelized. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. John, John Paul II spoke prophetically, but he said it this way. He spoke always of the springtime of the Spirit coming upon the church. And what he was saying was that there's going to be a springtime of evangelization in the new millennium coming upon the church. But he qualified this. He qualified it by saying, if we become docile to the Holy Spirit. The reason he qualified it is because there's no evangelization without without the Holy Spirit. If you think you're leading the charge, you better get out of the way because the Holy Spirit is going to run you over because you're not leading the charge. You've got to be listening to the Spirit lead here. And if, if the community has learned how to listen to the voice of the Spirit, things happen. The power of God is released in that community to evangelize the culture. Just like you're saying, like it, the puzzle pieces fit in. You have people that are doing all the background. You have people that are doing the hospitality. You have people doing the leadership, music, all that kind of stuff. And then in doing their gifts and doing their, those charisms that they've been given, it, it, it First of all, brings everybody alive uh, because because they're using the Holy Spirit. Well, that's one of the signs that you've got a particular charism is that when you operate in that charism and the power of the Lord comes through you to 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 use that charism, you feel alive, you feel energized, you feel like, oh, I could do this all day. Yeah. And you, if you're operating out of your charism. Yes. You you, you might get physically tired, but you don't get spiritually tired or emotionally tired because you're the Lord gives you energy and life in the charism. If you live it, it's okay, part of the gift. Okay, good point. So let's just say we're listening to this now. We start to understand what these are, and maybe we've experienced it ourselves in our own lives a little bit here and there. Um, how do we discern exactly what those gifts, those charisms are in our life? Like, Because mine are going to be different than Father Daniele's or yourself or whatever. And so we have different gifts, but what are the, some of the ones, like how would I discern that this is a charism in my life? And it's so I could open up and maybe use it more or ask the Holy Spirit to use it more in my life. Does that make sense? Yeah, Sherry Waddell has a, has a beautiful um, question. There are questionnaires that you can, that that usually will highlight about 25 of the of the more experienced charisms, yeah. popular charisms. And you can take a test, and in answering the test then, um, uh, you know, it'll ask you a question about, um, maybe about te- the charism of teaching. So it would phrase a question, and you would score yourself on zero to four, whether you would never want to stand in front of anybody <laughs> and teach, or whether that you really enjoy doing, and you do it in your life. Yeah. Um, so you answer the 100 questions and then you score yourself. And usually you look at your top three charisms. So that's a way to help you identify your charisms. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're going to get, you're, people are going to tell you, if, if I have the charism of teaching, people are going to tell me that you're good and they're going to want me to teach. Yeah. If I'm going to get life from doing it, yeah. from teaching is going to give me life. Yeah. Um, there's one more. Fruit. There's going to be fruit in yeah. my teaching. Yeah. People are going to learn what I'm trying to teach them. 
Yeah. So those are the three. So looking for uh, people are going to identify it in you first of all, yeah. uh, and then, and you're going to get life from it, even though, and then and then there will be fruit from it. The spiritual fruit from. And it. I, I know that I, I've experienced myself, and I speak of this before, but of, of music because I, I I know that I have a charism of music, but it's one of those things like someone says, okay, you, can you come do music? I'm like, oh. oh, but I know as soon as I get there. I feel alive. I feel awoken. I feel, you know what I mean? Even though I'm physically tired from doing whatever all day, but it's when I get there, I know that I'm going to feel better because it just kind of seems to come alive. So I want to go back to something that Florence said. If I've been baptized, I've received charisms. Yeah. How come I, how come I don't know them? How come I, I don't like, how do I release them in my life? Father Kent, Kent, Cardinal now, Cantor Lamassa said that, Confirmation, for example, is a bound sacrament. So we're given these wrapped gifts, charisms, and we have to be able to unwrap them to use them. Mm -hmm. We don't just put them on a shelf, but we're not often taught about the charisms because the church hasn't had to evangelize till lately. So there hasn't been a focus on evangelizing. Cardinal Cardinal Candlemas says it's a bound sacrament. And we need our own personal Pentecost in order for the gifts to be released into our life. So we're given the gifts at baptism, but until we have an experience of the Holy Spirit uh, and the love, the Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and Son, as we experience you know, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, is what Corinthians calls it, baptized in the Holy Spirit, we... we our life shifts. Our eyes are open like they were for the apostles. We, we understand the lordship of Jesus. We want to follow him. We feel um, the love of the Father and the Son within us. Something awakens in us in, in, when we're baptized in the Spirit. So how, how are the charisms normally released in somebody's life? They go through a program that, uh, that provides an environment where they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not necessary, no. but it's the typical normal way that the Lord is going to... So there are programs, the Focalori Movement, the Curcio Movement, um, um, Life in the Spirit Seminars, there's Christ Life, there's, um, there's Alpha. There's all kinds of programs there that, that, that bring people on a journey to be open to receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit, their own personal Pentecost, where there's an awakening to the reality of the Holy Spirit in our life and the Lordship of Jesus in our life. As you say that, I just think, I think of people that are, I mean, if someone's listening or, or people that know people um, that are sitting in there and they kind of go, what is faith all about? Why is my faith? Like, is this just about going to church on Sundays and then being able to say the rosary and those kind of things? Because I think a lot of times it, it, we're, we're <laughs> Like you said, we're in a generation right now where that's what faith is to people. So when they say I'm Catholic, it means that I go to church on Sunday, that I celebrate the Catholic celebrations, Christmas, Easter, those types of things. I make sure my kids are baptized. I make sure they're confirmed. Grandma makes sure I take them to the First Communion. Those types of things is kind of the idea. If that's all faith is, I can see people sitting there going, this this. This is cultural, right? This is like this. This is a culture. This is not a. This is not a, a faith. But what you're talking about is making faith come alive. It's it's something completely different. It's going to take over your life. It's going to. You're going to be starting to use gifts and talents that you didn't realize that you had necessarily for the great for evangelization to bring people closer to Christ. And you're going to get life from it. And you're going to feel good about it. And there's going to be fruit from it. So those are like, if you're sitting on the bench going, why am I going to church on Sunday? I'm going to say this sounds like the thing to kind of dive into and look at it because if you see a TV in black and white, and I've talked about this many times, if you see a TV in black and white, how do you explain to somebody what color TV looks like? It's, it's hard. You can't say, well, it's a color red. You, they don't understand. But this is something like if you're watching that, this is what faith could be for you. It can be alive. It can be, you know. It's the reason we're born. Yeah. It's the reason we're yeah. baptized. Yeah, and your point about a personal Pentecost like duh like <laughs> like you look at the at the apostles the disciples who received the holy spirit they were sort of frozen before that moment they didn't know how to go forward they were nervous they asked they were just following jesus lead right and like yeah. he had resurrected from the dead <laughs> so they followed him around again they were like oh he's back you know yeah, like yes yeah, yeah. he's our that's the leader and then when he ascended into heaven they really 
did not know what to do until the Holy Spirit gave them the motivation and gave them uh, the zeal to go and the gift to go, the charisms to go. But I, I do want to make a, differ, a differentiation because oftentimes if someone's listening to this and thinking like, oh, well, a lot of people tell me all the time that I have the gift of whatever yeah. and it bears fruit in my life. It doesn't make me tired. I do want to differentiate that <laughs> there is a common purpose for your gift. It's not just the talent you have. Right, a gift is different from a talent talent. because the charism always contributes to the building up of the Christian community. Always, always, Always. it's not just something you're good at. Like if I if I said to Josh, he was really good at baking, and it brings great fruit to the people around us. I mean, that's great, and you know your neighbors (laughs) probably love you, but But that doesn't mean it's is it building up the body of the body of Christ? You know, so it's a different from a talent. Yes, and. Grace does build on nature. Sure. So if if you've got the the gift to bake and to share with the community, that might be an indication that there is a charismatic, there's a charism that you have, and you are yeah. expressing it, but maybe not in the direction that the church is calling you to. Maybe it's in hospitality because yeah. you really love making people feel at home and welcome and serving, and so it, that it's taking it's taking the next step. Yeah, and yeah. it's supporting the church's mission to evangelize. Are, is your life doing that? Are you putting your charism at the disposal of the church, or is it not? Is yeah. it for you? And because, that's how, that's yeah. how you're going to open up more. That's how that's how you're going to open up that gift fully. If if that makes sense, if, oh. as you use it, I think of it like a, I was telling, talking to my boys. You have a little tube. You know, and it's full of dirt. You squirt some water through it a little bit. It starts with a little hole, you know, and then eventually as that water gets stronger and stronger, it opens up to then you've you've unleashed the entire all the dirt from the hole and now you got this full tube full of water again squirted out. So like you, the Holy Spirit kinda act in the same way. The Holy Spirit Yeah, we, we are conduits yeah. of God's love. And and God's love is expressed in us through the charisms for the building up of the church, for the kingdom of God. Yeah, that's exactly okay. true. I want to just ask a question here because um, from from the day of our baptism, we're given these charisms, yeah. and those things are given to us. Not only that, you know, our faith sort of continues on this journey. We're made strong. We're, we're we we come to love the Lord and discover at different ages how to use our charisms, right? And I want to suggest, I guess, and see what you think about this. <laughs> okay. It's like there's a there's a there's a if you if you look around the world today, you know it's almost like it's sad that people aren't recognizing that their relationship with God. But I would even argue that because people have certain charisms, that's where they're sort of attacked spiritually, right? Sure. So that their charism is not fully activated or used in the, in the world, because oftentimes you see people with certain gifts. Sort of the opposite is happening in their life right uh like you know uh, we keep going but we keep going back to hospitality i guess but yeah. someone maybe with the gifts of hospitality that can really build up the body of christ it struggles with uh you know anger or loneliness or something that they just can't break that they can't connect with people because of something that's happened they can't heal from uh something like that and you see almost the opposite happening from the gift that they have is 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 this where we're sort of attacked is this where sort of you know, the devil comes and tries to prevent us from using our charisms. And yeah. Father of lies, yeah. right? He's going to whisper in your ear. I mean, it, and it's to tell the difference between your own voice, the Holy Spirit's voice, and the devil's voice. You've got these voices speaking into your life to give your life direction, but you've got to be attentive to the proper voice. That's why it's so important to have to develop this relationship with the Holy Spirit in your prayer. Be attentive to the, the right voice so you're following the right voice and your charism is being released and not bound, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because it, you're right. If I have the gift of intercession, and, and intercession is, is an incredibly important gift for the church because before any program is successful that the church is going to be run, there are people on their knees praying for the success, right. that, that the doors open and that the walls come down. They need to break it. So if, 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 if the devil can attack those people that are, that are, whose power, the intercessory you know, yeah. prayer power is, is coming through and taking down those walls, that's what he's going to do because that's, 
that's how he can retain a hold on the parish or on the on whatever's happening, right? Yeah. He, he, if he can attack those people that are on the front line of taking down the wall, that's who he's going to attack, right? It's not necessarily a weak link, but, but it is people crucial. So when a parish gets to a certain point and they need an administrator to... to there's lots happening in the parish, and now the priest needs an administrator to look after and coordinate things so that he's free to, to minister. Yeah. Um, you, you, there's got to be somebody there with that gift, and if the, if the devil has distracted him and pulled him away, and he's however the devil can do that, I mean, yeah. this, right, the sinfulness or whatever, yeah, Distraction. then then we're missing a piece of the puzzle that is going to be able to pull things together. That gift we're missing for our parish, mm-hmm. and the parish pays a price for that. What would you say to a pastor uh, of a parish? when this this is just not happening in in the parish community like uh you know maybe attendance is low i i know a lot of priests complain you know not i don't have any help or there's no volunteers or uh, this like what would you say to to a pastor because ultimately when we ha- when we make use of our charisms this is the main way to evangelize it we are doing the work of god because that's the gift that he's given us right so what would you say to, to I, a pastor or a parish community that 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 is suffering cuz uh, is suffering from that problem i would say start with the people that are the prayers prayers in your people that your pray intercessor. in your intercessors that are in your parish oh, yeah. you've got them there they're the ones still coming to mass they're the ones that are faithful those those they're the ones that are growing in their faith they have a relationship with Jesus or the father and hopefully the holy spirit too start with them call them together say this is what i want this is my vision for my parish we're going to meet once a week and we're going to pray together for these doors to this door to open so that we can become a center of evangelization that we recognize um, what it is we need to the walls we need to take down the doors we need to open the people that we need to invite to this uh, a, a next step for our for our journey in, in towards evangelization so i would say the first gather people around you that are faithful to prayer they're the most important starting point because the Lord can begin to open doors, and we've experienced that here in the North Bay region. Mm-hmm. You know. On, on that note, so just to kind of follow up on that, because I think the next step that I hear people maybe voicing, or well, that's not my charism. So you know, you got a lot of intercessors, but you don't have anybody that's willing to do this, that, or the other thing, per se. Because well, we can't really get started because we don't have anybody with those gifts. Does God limit our charisms that He gives us to very specifically? You get three at baptism. That's it. Or are like are there are other things that like can my charisms change? Can my yes. you know what I mean? Yes. Okay, that's a real good question. We usually will have two or three main charisms that mm-hmm. we express in our lives, but the charisms are also situational. So I may not have the gift of healing, but there may be somebody in front of me that the Lord wants to heal, and I'm and I'm you're the only guy there. <laughs> I'm Balaam's ass, yeah. and he calls me over and he says. <laughs> If I'm attuned to the Holy Spirit, then I will respond. Yeah. And through the love I have for the person, even though I don't express that charism of healing, it's not, it's not what would, I would consider mine. It's situational. The Lord can do whatever he wants to do. He can do the impossible. So if you're in that situation, the Lord wants to heal that person, and you're available mm-hmm. and in tune, then your prayer will cause the Lord's grace to come through and heal that person. So they are situational in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like we're an instrument. I mean, I, I use this before, but we're instruments, and then God's got to play his tune. But he can play his tune on a piano. He can play his tune on a guitar. He can play his tune however he wants. Now, a guitar is more used for this type of music, but he can use a guitar and play Mary Had a Little Lamb if he wants to. You know what I mean? Like, he can still get the same or thing. Or Ave across. Maria. Or Ave Maria. Yeah, exactly. You know? And so yeah. he can use you as an instrument as long as you're willing to be played and you're willing to be, in, as, as long as you're in tuned, <laughs> quote unquote, um, uh, at, at, with the Spirit, you know? And, and he can play you. I, I, you. You know, Father, you bring up something that I, it's, it's, it's on my heart about our priests and our, our parishes are supposed to be centers of evangelization. I think that's, 
what we're beginning to understand is needed. That, that this is, if the church exists to evangelize, the parish exists to evangelize. Mm. So we've got, to, we've got to begin to build centers of evangelization. And I, the way I see it is that, that our pastors have to, first of all, experience the power of the Holy Spirit, know what their charisms are, so that they're living and people are seeing it through them. But more than that, they have to be ident- able to identify the charisms that people in their parish have. Mm-hmm. So he can go to the administrator and say, look, I need your help. We're gonna, we've got four programs running, and, I'm, and, I, and I can't tie this. I need somebody that can pull this together for us as a parish. Yeah. Um, I think one of the jobs of pastors now is to identify the charisms in people, affirm them in it, encourage them in it, and give them a place to develop that charism. And, and if they're getting life from the charism, they're going to bring life to whatever it is they're doing, yeah. whether it's hospitality or music teaching or, or music yeah, yeah. Or, or helps. Yeah. It, 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 but I, I really see if, if, if pastors can begin to, to look for the giftedness, the charisms of their, of their flock and, and encourage the people, and pull, I think you have this charism. I think you have this gift. And I think, and this is where we need you in the parish. I think if pastors can begin to do that and see that as part of their role, then the people are going to be carrying the load here. Your load becomes pastoral. And it doesn't become, um, you know, uh, uh, cooking the meal because we've got got a a breakfast to do for this group. Uh, You've, you know, you've called forth the gifts. And those people in the kitchen that are doing that are happy to be there. Yeah, Mm. because they get life from it. And they give the pastor life as in their joy and in their uh, gratefulness to have a job and to, to see themselves fitting in the parish and to have ownership of the parish and what's happening in the parish. Yeah. They become more and more invested if they can use their gifts. And if the, if the pastor can help them identify what their gift is and give them a role. That's key if we're going to become centers of evangelization because the pastor cannot do it all. And he's not supposed to. That's why we're given in baptism this universal call placed on our life to mission and, and the charisms to support us doing it. Yeah. But pastors, I think, have to begin to see that they're not administrators. They shouldn't be focused on uh, painting the church and, and putting a new roof on the church. I mean, it's part of the job, part of, part of their, their, their being good stewards. Yeah. But that's not where their time should be. It isn't. There are people that are gifted to do that. And if you're spending 85% of your time, as one of the bishops said lately as he polled his priests, 85% of their time is spent in administration. Well, there's something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There's something. We've got to begin to see, uh, you know, uh, the role of a pastor differently than than we are. And they've got to begin to see how to move from from where they are to where the Holy Spirit's calling them to be as a pastor. You can see that in like uh, it doesn't when you go to a parish, you know. Even if you're just visiting, you can sense that uh, you, you can sense know it a parish that's alive and and tapping into people's charisms, and a parish that's just sort of functioning as a a, 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 a location yeah. to receive the sacrament, right? Yes. Um, yes. So if someone is listening today and they are reflecting on their own parish experience and they themselves are interested in discovering their own charisms of the Holy Spirit and doing that for other people in their parish how would you say that they could maybe approach their pastor to start this process like hey we need to identify in our community which parishioners have charisms so that we can build up the body of Christ here. We can build up our community. Like how, how does someone do that? If, if the pastor's not doing it, if the pastoral team is not doing it, if there is one, mm-hmm. like where does someone get the courage to do that? And how would you approach a pastor? Listen, I know I just asked Brian a question, but we're actually going to answer that question next week because we've run out of time for today. But our interview with Brian continues next week on next week's episode. We're going to answer this question about how someone approaches their pastor uh, to see how we can identify charisms in the parish. We're also going to talk about the gift of tongues. We're going to talk about cautions about the charisms 
of uh, the Holy Spirit. So stay tuned as our interview with Brian continues next week. So we're out of time for today, but uh, continue to uh, uh, pray about your own charisms. uh, Continue to pray about your own gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, for Josh Sullivan, Brian Sullivan, uh, my name is Father Dinelli. We'll see you next week for part two on the Catholic Buzz.